we go to the last portion of this lecture, let's talk about what stars end up as when they die. Okay? So, so if we draw this uh, picture, this can kind of go nice with this one. Typical properties of a white dwarf right here. And then this is what a white dwarf, uh, see mass, surface temperature, diameter, density, surface gravity, luminosity, visual, absolute magnitude, 11. These are kind of nice, and then that's kind of what we're going to list over there. This one shows you the inside of a typical white dwarf, composition of a white dwarf. It could be a simple white dwarf. It could be a little bit more complex, hydrogen, helium, or it could be hydrogen, helium, carbon, hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, or it could be a little bit more complex, hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, neon. Okay. So here are some properties of white dwarfs. They're roughly their mass is about the mass of the sun. It could be less than the mass of the sun, equal to the mass of the sun, but it cannot be heavier than 1.4 mass of the sun. We mentioned that before. This is named, it's called the Chandrasekhar limit, named after famous Indian physicist Chandrasekhar. Okay? He came up with this uh, number using the equations of physics. The temperatures of white dwarfs, they're generally going to be hotter than our sun. Our sun's temperature, 5,800 Kelvin. White dwarfs are going to be hotter, 7,000 to roughly around 20,000 Kelvin. Typical size, they're going to be the same as the size of the Earth, which is 100 the size of the sun about. Now, imagine what that means. These guys have the same as the mass of the sun, but they're equal to the size of the Earth. So imagine taking the mass of the sun and then compressing it and down to the size of the Earth. That means they have huge density, right? Huge, huge density, very dense. What is their density? 500,000 gram per cubic centimeter. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. The density of the earth is five and a half grams per cubic centimeter. These things are many, many hundreds of thousand times denser than the earth. If I ever were able to go to a white dwarf and take a little spoonful of a white dwarf and give it, give it to you, would you be able to carry it? One spoon of a white dwarf. No, one spoon will be... Uh, weighs 500 kilogram, okay, roughly about 1,000 pounds, say that way. One spoon of a white dwarf is about 1,000 pounds. Uh, you know, you'll fall down because that's how dense it is, okay? Gravity, if you ever were to stand on the surface of the white dwarf without melting, you would weigh 130,000 times what you weigh on Earth. So what is that going to do to you? Is it a friendly place to be? It's going to crush you. It's going to crush your rocket, your spaceship, you, everything, you know. And roughly the luminosity, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 times the luminosity of the sun. So the reason that they are so dim is because they're small. They're small. They don't have a lot of luminosity. But they are hotter than the sun, you see. Absolute luminosity, 11. So they're dimmer than the sun, you see. Remember the sun was a 4.83. Their luminosity on the Hipparchus scale is larger. The chemical composition could be hydrogen for low mass parent stars. Okay, that's what they're talking about here. You see hydrogen? But as the, as the parent star gets heavier, heavier, more complex, the he, white dwarf it ends up as could be this guy. Okay? Hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, neon for heavier parent stars. Our sun, when it dies, it will most likely end up as somewhere in the middle. When it dies, it ends up as a white dwarf. It's going to look like this. It's going to be the size of the Earth. It's going to have hydrogen in it, the helium in it, and carbon in it. Now, here's the other weird thing about white dwarfs. 
If I were to go into the white dwarf and I were to study the helium in it, the, the, the hydrogen, in, the helium in it, the carbon in it, I'm going to find something interesting about the helium in the white dwarf and the carbon in the white dwarf. They're going to be different than the helium we know on Earth and the carbon that we know on Earth, right? The regular carbon that we know on Earth, how many protons and uh, electrons does it have? So that if you go to the periodic table, the regular carbon, atomic number six, has six protons, six electrons, right? Six protons, six electrons. Those six electrons have to be in what orbits? Remember from chemistry, there's 1s2, 2s2, right? You have to fit those electrons in, into orbits. And in the first orbit, you can fit how many electrons? Yeah, two. You have the nucleus. The first orbit, you can have two electrons. In the second orbit, how many electrons do you have? You could do 2p, uh, 2s2, and then you can also have a 2p1, 2p, you know, uh, you could have the p orbits, right? So you could fit two here in the s orbit, you see? So the, if you do the 1s, you go like that, 2s, then you have 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 5, 6. You can fit an electron in the 2p1 orbit, and you can fit another electron in the 2p2 orbit. Okay? Now, here's the difference of the carbon found in the white dwarf star. In the white dwarf star, when we go and look at the carbon, all the six electrons are all in the first orbit. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Weird, huh? That means if I do the electron structure for a carbon in a white dwarf, I go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fit them all into the 1s orbit. In other words, they disobey the laws of physics and chemistry that we know of. They're all, the electrons are pushed into the first orbit. Nothing like that exists that we know of, okay? What are these known as? Since they disobey the laws, they're called degenerate electrons. They're degenerate. We don't like them. So you see, they all occupy the first orbit. This is why a white dwarf is so dense. This form of matter is only found in WDs, white dwarfs. Okay, now let's talk about neutron stars.